there, I'll pop in conversation. There are some nice looking cookies out there, and the coffee is always uh, fresh, hot and fresh. So please avail yourselves. Today we will have Sunday school. I, if you care to, uh, there's there's no shenanigans, no birthday cakes, no celebrations this morning. Today there is Sunday school for those who care to stay. And hope that you will. Uh, Epic youth. Hopefully the snow lets up, and so Jordan can uh, have time with our youth this evening. And um, thank you for everyone who has brought their boxes in. They are due today so that they can be taken to the distribution point uh, to be sent on to their final destination. Thank you, everyone. The Christmas tree ornaments are available. Um, thank you again, Andrea, for your uh, craftiness. And uh, next Sunday, Fittingly, that will be Commitment Sunday as we give thanks this morning as you leave. Everyone, please exit by the wedding <coughs> room because there is a pledge form over there for, with your name on it. So pick it up and take it with you. Contemplate this week what your commitment to your church will be. Uh, that saves the church a little bit of postage. If everyone that is here will pick it up, uh, for everyone else, we will be mailing them out. Um, that's it. Okay. Um, the Christmas season is nearly upon us. Next Sunday is the first Sunday in Advent, and to that end, Kyle and, and his family are again leading up the effort to do the decorations in the church. Friday morning at 8 o'clock, any individuals who might be available to help bring all the decorations down to the upstairs, down downstairs, and then Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, gather together and actually do the decorating. So, uh, Friday morning at 8, to give Kyle a hand, and uh, Saturday at 9, to actually put up the decorations. And let me see, I think, I think that is all the announcements that I have, except to wish Barry Greeley a happy birthday. Um, any other announcements that need to be made? Why not? Let's serenade him. We actually have the right notes. Uh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. shadow down this week. So we need to keep her in our prayers as we do that, that A, it's been a time of refreshment, uh, but also that uh, after having such a companion for such a long period of time that uh, she goes through this. So uh, I don't know necessarily because of that, but this morning, mostly Sean and I, mostly Sean, but I will also be trying to bring a message consistent with last week she spoke about thanks this morning we are talking about giving and with that i have selected this morning a prayer of john wesley pray with me together O oh lord we lift our eyes to see your glory we open our hearts to receive your love we engage our minds to understand your truths we offer our songs to praise your name. Lord, as we give our lives, please take everything that we are so that we may reveal your blessings to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, as you are so led, if you would stand and join with the praise team in our two opening songs, Jesus Messiah, and give thanks.
and give, give God our thanks and our praise. Oh Lord God, we do pause in this time to give you our thanks and our praise for the many gifts that we enjoy and so many times it can be easy to take these blessings for granted. We do live in a country where although there is indiscriminate violence on our streets, for the most part, we live in a very peaceful country that we can come and go freely, that we have adequate food on our table, adequate clothes on our back, and a warm and comfortable place called home. We have family and friends who love us, and while we are mindful of those that do not enjoy these blessings, we are nevertheless so grateful that you have blessed us. We do pray for those who have been victimized by violence, who have been taken in by the scourge of drugs, who this morning are sleeping in a cardboard box, eating out of a dumpster. Lord, the words that you spoke come to mind. When did I see you naked or hungry? So Lord, give us, give us the will to be the hands, your hands and feet to minister to these people. Lord, we pray for many in our congregation this morning, <clears throat> for those who have undergone surgery and our need of healing, for the blessing of a newborn baby. For the families that are mourning the loss of one of their loved ones. We do pray, Lord, for those individuals. You know who they are, and we lay those names before you, knowing that you hear our prayer. We do pray this morning for our Pastor Lee as she is away from us this morning, losing her good friend pet shadow this week, that after such a long time together that you would be with her as she goes through this time of mourning the loss of shadow. We do give praise this morning for our first responders, for our police, for our military. The first responders, regardless of the time of day, the weather, whether they actually even fail, respond to those who are in need, and for our police force that keeps our streets and highways safe, and for our military deployed around the world, protecting not only our freedom, but the freedom of men. We continue to pray, Lord, for our political leaders as we go through this time of transition, we ask that you would be with those individuals who will take office, their oath of office soon, that they will take their responsibility seriously, that their decisions that they might make will be for the benefit of this of this country. Lord, we do pray, especially for this congregation, as we go through this time of introspection, that you would be in our midst. And we pray for the United Methodist Church, that regardless of the direction that we take and the direction of the United Methodist Church, that people might come to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and experience the wonderful blessing of salvation that can come through denying ourselves, picking up the cross, and following our Savior. Lord, we do give you our thanks and praise. There are things that have remained on our hearts. We know that you hear them. We lay them before you, trusting that you 
you will answer our prayers. And now we join our hearts and our voices together as we pray that prayer that you taught your disciples so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because of the weather, we're a little thin in our choir this morning, but our musical offering this morning is one that's somewhat familiar. The arrangement is a little different, but we gather together.
chief priests and the teachers of law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Jesus took Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Now, as you are so led, you would like to stand and we'll sing together. We gather together, those of you using the hymn on page 131. So with that, let's start with a little prayer. Father God, we just ask for you to be with us this morning. Uh, those that are here in person, those that are online, um, 
may our message uh, reflect on you in ways that you want. And may we as a church do your will here in this place. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Uh, so, uh, Mark is going to come up here and share a whole list of great things that we do uh, through everybody here, through the support, through the, the generosity of your time, your talent, uh, and your treasure. And then we're going to talk a little bit uh, about what it means to be on this Christian journey. So with that, Mark's going to come over. It's a list that when you start putting it all together is very, very impressive. We send out the upper rooms to our very shut-ins, as well as each week sending out the bulletins to those who are shut-ins. We sponsor the Super Bowl, and I'm going to say we collectively, even though there are certain individuals that take responsibility for this, <clears throat> and most of them are women. Challenge the West guys. Uh, sponsor the Super Bowl luncheon and election for the food pantry. Gifts, ca gift cards for our college students. Fake, fake goods auction. Sock collection that goes to the school nurse to be distributed as necessary. We collect the, the worn out shoes. Some can be repurposed, some can be discarded, but we get paid by the pound for those shoes. So a reminder, don't ever throw your old shoes away, put them in a bag so that <coughs> our phone genie, Karen, and her cohorts can bind them together and take them to the collection spot to, uh, so that money can be earned uh, for the ministries of the church. The spring, summer, fall, winter clothing drop. Um, we all, from time to time, our closet or our drawers get a little bit tight, and there's clothing that we haven't worn in a very long time, so put it in a bag, bring it here, and it gets distributed primarily to the Rainbow Connection. A Mother's Day banquet. You know, over, over time, there's been some just heartburn over calling it Mother's Day, but in reality, it doesn't matter what you call it, whether you call it mothers and daughters, or whether you call it ladies, it's still a nice time of gathering together and ministry to, uh, to the female in our congregation and to their family. Uh, organized meals for people within the church when they've had surgeries or an extended illness. Uh, various families say, yeah, I'll, I'll cook a meal and make sure it gets delivered. That's page one. Our card ministry. I think all of you have received at one time or another a birthday greeting or a sympathy card in the loss of a loved one, the homecoming fest luncheon, the harvest dinner, which we were just talking this morning how much fun that was, when we all come together to do our various things, whether it's <coughs> writing notes on the top of the, well, I want potatoes with gravy and stuffing, but it was a great time of fellowship and uh, as you talk to people in the community, they, they are still comp complimenting the quality of the food and the amount of the food. So thank you for everyone who was engaged with that. A Bethany luncheon um, for people when they are at the time of passing of a loved one. Um, this year, we are preparing 13 Thanksgiving <coughs> baskets, I think 11, 10, of whom are not related to this congregation. The memory tree, uh, is it the memory tree that's been put up? That's no, it's the other two. Uh, anyway, the memory tree, Christmas greetings. Um, we were uh, the host church for the Ministerium's Musical Festival for the second time this year. Um, the NAP committee thought, you know, we, we don't often enough say thank you to our teachers, so the last few years they have provided uh, cake to the teachers saying in, uh, on the, one of their in-service days that they can know that we as a congregation appreciate the efforts that they do. Uh, most recently, Don and Sissy Montgomery with their ministry were running out of space to store their stuff. And we were gracious enough to provide them with a room 
in the last couple of weeks, there's been a gathering of ladies that have been downstairs wrapping those gifts so that they can be distributed to their families. Um, and we also support All God's Children, another ministry that Don and Sissy Montgomery uh, provide. The prayer walk for the school at the beginning of the school year. Graduation banner downtown. Uh, we've had had two, but now I think we're down to one since the diners and the fence has been refurbished. But we do have a congratulations to all of our graduates. Uh, we support the McCray brothers that broadcast uh, certain events and do our advertising. Collect for school supplies. Uh, collect socks, underwear, and blue jeans again to go to the school nurse that can be distributed as necessary. Operation Christmas Child. Shower of Blessings. This little room over here is available not only for us as members of this congregation, but if we have a neighbor or a friend that needs a little bit of help, there are items in there from toothbrushes to laundry soap to boxes of cereal. And again, because of your generous support. We have had several after church luncheons provided funds to help with the medical expenses, traveling expenses, and fire recovery for people not only within this congregation, but also uh, within our community. Those are a pretty inclusive list of the various ministries that are possible through your generous contribution of your time, your talent, and your treasure, and we certainly at this time of Thanksgiving. I uh, want to say thank you to everyone. And uh, but you know, as, as this as uh, Jesus was talking with his disciples and said, when I was hungry, when I was naked, when I was in prison, it's very easy to focus on the things that we can see. But we also need to be mindful of the things we don't often think about. As I mentioned in the prayer. And I think about this often. I've been blessed to enjoy a relatively healthy life. Very few ailments. And I say, why me? I, I could be, have been born to parents that couldn't have given a breath to the life of the church. And yet here I am. And there are people this morning in our communities sleeping under a worn, a worn blanket, not necessarily a warm one, but a worn one, eating out of a dumpster, and here we are. So I, I take that challenge that when did you see me naked or lonely? One for us, each one of us to contemplate, especially as we go through this coming week and as in the coming days, that transition from Thanksgiving to the Christmas season, how much God has blessed us and how great the challenge is outside of these four walls. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. I'd like to also give a shout out to our music ministry, which uh, is pretty tremendous. Uh, you know, appreciate everybody's leadership around that and participation. And um, it is uh, particularly meaningful. I think we would agree, correct, that uh, having great music in this church is a blessing. And if you've never experienced a church that doesn't have it, it is different. You know, and worship through music is to me something that I enjoy very much, and hopefully you do as well. And I'd also say, you know, those that uh, sacrifice their time to teach, those that, uh, you know, step up, whether it's for Sunday school, for adults, or for the youth, or for children. Um, I mean, years ago, someone said, you know, I was up, someone said, I don't remember who, it's like, what if, what if everybody does what I'm doing, right? What happens? Do we have ministry efforts? Do we have... Uh, children who learn, you know, about the Word of God. Do we have adults who can dive deeper in, into their spiritual walk, or do we not? Do we have people that support this church, or not? I think of Jordan and the sacrifice that he makes on behalf of the youth in the community. You know, he could probably choose another career path. He could probably.
probably choose a career path that would make a lot more money. His heart and passion for youth ministry and something I'm thankful for. So I gotta tell you, I'm a bit of a mess in this, this, uh, this message this morning. When Pastor Lee asked us to do it, I've just been bombarded with thoughts, and so I'm gonna try to do my best to weave my way through it and hopefully make some sense out of it. But today we're focusing a little bit, not only on the thanks, but on the giving, the second part of the word thanksgiving and our scripture focus, you know, uh, makes me reflect on, am I living for myself in this world, this time, this country, where I'm at, uh, or am I living for Christ? And you know, the idea of baptism and, you know, in the water and out and, and you know, changing your life uh, for Jesus Christ. We have a focus on uh, this world and what it tells us we should want. You know, you know, if you watch the commercials, you know, what does it tell you you should want? Nice bar, nice house, lots of stuff. Um, I, I don't know, I don't think you find that in here. Now, I'm not saying those are bad things or we shouldn't seek to provide for our families, but, uh, you know, are the things of this world getting in the way of our, our journey of discipleship? And I call it discipleship because, you know, I, I like our Sunday school class. It gets, actually dives a little deeper. It's why, you know, pastor kind of challenges us to go into Sunday school class because you get to reflect with other people that are on this journey as well. And you get to hear from people that have some great wisdom for us as we're on this journey. You know, discipleship. It's scary uh, when you become a Christian, you know, like, you can actually kind of hold it off to the side. It's like, well, I want to put this badge on that says that I'm a part of this group of people, but I'm not sure I want to go all in. Anybody ever feel that way? I know I'm putting up both hands. I felt that way in my life, right? Because it happens, right? You're in a, you're in a moment where people are not doing things that are aligned with what Christ would say we should be doing. People are using language we shouldn't use, and you know, we all fall short of these things, but thank God for Jesus Christ, right? Amen. So I'm on this journey. This is, for me, how I reflect on this idea of denying myself, picking up my cross, and following Jesus Christ, right? I'm on a journey. I, I, I feel like I'm on a journey in my career. I think I'm in a big journey uh, with my faith walk, with my discipleship uh, with Jesus Christ. And hopefully it's something you can reflect on a little bit. Um, as you look at your walk, and some of you, maybe it's the beginning of your walk. You're just, you know, learning about what's, what this is all about. And it's complicated. I can tell you what. As I reflect on the me before I dove deeper into this journey and you try to unpack the Bible. I don't know. We've talked before with Jackie. It's, it's a little confusing. And outside of, you know, Christianity, you know, it's like, you guys are crazy, right? You're crazy. You know, I mean, are we delusional? I mean, how do you put all this together? I mean, why did God do that? Why did, he, you know, why did Jesus Christ come to a virgin, you know, have this birth and then, you know, sacrifice himself on the cross? I mean, just, just make us all good, right? I don't know. It's a little confusing. The theme of denying ourselves in the, the scripture lesson this morning, you know, there's this Sean, and I'm going to use myself as an example because it's the easiest one I've gotten. There's a Sean in the world that, you know, I, I could literally, the whole cookie jar is mine. That's the way I feel about it. I can feel about that in the physical presence of whatever I want. I think I could probably take it, right? And then there's the, you know, exercise in my career and what I have access to and you know, quite honestly, you can see it in, in the business community. Do you ever see a leader, an organizational leader, that has access to the, to the financial power of the company and they take advantage of it? All those things are choices that people make. Right? People they surround themselves with. Whether, whether you're the president of the, the business, the president of the country, doesn't matter. You get to make choices. You get to surround yourself with people that are holding you to a higher standard or not. You get to, you know, decide that you're going to live for a higher standard or not. I, the Sean of this world, you know, if I didn't have this influence in my life, if I didn't deny myself, it would look different. It's probably scary for most of us here, but for maybe people in the world, they'd be like, he's living the life. He's got it good, right? But for us, it would be a pretty scary one. 
The idea of serving, you know, in the business community, they talk about servant leadership, and it's this tagline, and, you know, do you, do you serve the people that, uh, that work with you, for you, whatever? Um, I think a lot of people put that nameplate on, but again, they don't really serve. You know, they want to be the boss. The idea of serving Jesus Christ, for me, you know, it's, it's almost in conflict with the halt that's inside of me that says, I don't need to serve anybody. Right? That's not what Jesus said. He says, I need to deny myself the things that I want and follow Jesus Christ. And as I've gotten on this journey, it means the things that I think about, the, the things that I want, the things that, uh, the way I feel, maybe aren't, aren't in alignment with what Jesus Christ wants in my life. What he wants out of me. And what am I doing about prioritizing Jesus Christ every day? I can tell you, for me, that is sometimes a big challenge. I don't know about you. We get pretty busy. Kids get cranky. It makes me cranky. Anybody ever experienced that? <laughs> hey? I'm always happy when I have like some communication with another parent. I'm like, hey, you're just like me. You get upset all the too, right? Because I'm here, what would Jesus do? Well, don't do that. And I'm there like, what are you doing? Yeah. Right? You ever feel that way? Let's leave their laughing. Thank you for laughing. I'm a, I'm a pretty passionate guy, pretty heart charging guy. I can, you know, not recognize that I'm stepping on other people, stepping you know, over people, whatever it is, and, and instead of stopping and saying, you know, what does Jesus want for me out of my life? How am I aligned in my journey on Jesus Christ? So, like, uh, when I got out of college, um, I, I, I think God's, like, had his hand on me. Because it's not me, right? It, it's all about Jesus. But he put me in situations and around people that just made me go, wow. Okay, the fork in the road. Do I want to give more or give less? Of my time, right? I I love to do things. I, I love to be active. And it can all be about what I want to do, go to the beach, go fishing, get on the boat, whatever those things are, you know. Or how does that how do I align with, with what God wants in my life? So I was taught about volunteers. When I was very, you know, right out of college, you know, you got this piece of paper, yay, you're smart, and, and I'm like, no, I'm really, I'm not. Thank goodness people came along and gave me some advice and showed me a better way. The idea of volunteerism, do we, do we commit of our time for the things on behalf of this church, you know, on behalf of, you know, our church family for Jesus Christ? Do we volunteer? You heard the list from Mark, and there are a lot more, actually. You know, I think you have three pages, but uh, it doesn't happen unless we do something, right? It doesn't happen unless someone says, I have an idea, and I think I can make that happen. Epic Youth is an example of that. You know, Jordan was looking for a home for that organization, and of all the churches, he said yes. We committed... Uh, you know, financial, you know, commitment to it. We, you know, uh, when I would say it didn't look like we probably should, we did. We have the space for it, and hopefully you feel compelled to volunteer and help out with it. He makes that plea every week, it seems, looking for help. What if, and that's a half-time ministry, right, Jordan? Part-time. What if it was full-time? Do we really care as a congregation whether people in this community, the kids in this community, hear about Jesus Christ? Do you care? If you care, maybe you say, hmm, what can I do a little bit different over the next 30, 60, 90 days? Make a commitment, right? Over there on the table, everybody hopefully has got one of these envelopes. And it talks about what we are going to do for this church ministry, for this church ever. Maybe you're saying, you know what? I want to volunteer for Epic Youth. And maybe you say, you know what? I want it to be a full-time thing that we can do in this church. That we can get more kids in here, and that we can impact more children uh, in the youth in this community. Wouldn't that be a blessing? My volunteerism 
How am I building relationships? I tell you, I'm so thankful for all you guys and gals here. Uh, the relationships, you know, I'm, I'm naturally not like this. I gotta put it on, you know, to get up here and do this. But, you know, give me my tractor cap. I'm just gonna go mow weeds down. But, you know, the relationships that I've formed in my, my, my journey, uh, you know, have shaped me. You, you challenge me to be better. You challenge me to reflect on, hmm, when I'm out in the community, when I'm out with my family, when I'm out with other people, am I reflecting on you in a positive way? When people say, you know what, wherever that guy's at, I want to go there. Mark's shared uh, several times, and I've broken bread with him about how in his life, he sat with other people and ate dinner, and people said to him, Mark, this is something different about you. It's kind of scary to be different like that. People might say, oh, hey, Bible number over there. You know what I mean? Everybody has heard that, right? I don't know. Put that badge on. Build those relationships that help you pick up your cross and carry it. Help others carry that cross. When you think of... Uh, the, the uh, things that happen in this church, and I'm going to give you the technical of it, we need $230,000 to execute on the things that happened last year. You know, just keeping the, the lights on, the electricity, and paying the salaries, and all that good stuff. But we, we could do more. If everybody said, hey, I'm going to give a little more of my time, my talent, my treasure, our organization, this church, our family could do more to benefit others. We could grow ourselves uh, in this community. It's always funny when I talk to people, uh, I have friends that are, you know, Christians and, you know, different churches, and, you know, I always ask about stewardship because I drew that straw, you know, the stewardship guy. And, uh, you know, it's funny when people reflect on, uh, their experiences with it, it's like, it's always like, well, those guys always want more money. It's like, I don't know who those guys are, but it's all us, right? It's all us. When I tell you we need money, it's not those guys, it's we need money in order to operate this church. And I hope that you consider that next year, uh, the cost to run this organization isn't going down, it's going up, right? We know that because everything else in our lives has increased in price. The cost of the utilities, the cost of insurance, the cost to replace anything, to repair anything. Kevin, as stingy as he is, is a banker, a former banker. I'm joking. He's very mindful of our money because in trustees, there are a lot of things we could be doing that we've not, not done. We've deferred some maintenance activity. And you know what? To buy a gallon of paint today versus a gallon of paint two years ago, it's a lot more money. If you've done a home project, you probably know that. I think the, the idea of giving on my uh, financial resources is part of my Christian journey and, you know, it's part of me picking up my cross and saying, you know what, the easiest thing I can do to break my, the spell of money and the hold that it has on us, any of us, of me, is to give it away. People say, ooh, you know, giving my money away? I mean, I might not be able to buy another fishing lure or another chainsaw or Penn State tickets or Ohio State tickets or whatever you like to buy. What is, what is the value of those things in the grand scheme of things, though? What if I'm investing in Jordan and Epic Peter? I think that's really what God's trying to tell us in the scripture lesson today. So I reflect on Thanksgiving, and we have a lot to be thankful for. Like Mark said, you know, I mean, we're pretty lucky we're born in this country. Billions of people aren't. Pretty lucky to turn the faucet on and clean water comes out. Billion plus people don't have that luxury. Pretty, pretty lucky that I'm here in this building. It's fairly warm this morning, right? Anybody? Maybe you're overheated, maybe you're cold, but it's a pretty average temperature. It's not 16 degrees in here. But for a lot of people, that's not their existence. And yet we feel like we still need more, more stuff, 
still got to hold on to the things that we want. Jesus Christ says, hey, you got to give it up. You got to pick up your cross and you got to follow me. Um, sometimes people say, you know what? I'm not one of those rich people. I can't do that. Right? Now, you can do that in a lot of different ways. I mean, it could be that, well, I'm not retired, so I can't give my time because I'm busy. Right? I mean, I've got kids. I've got a wife. I got I got stuff to do. I got a career that uh, it definitely will take all my time. I'm not retired. I can't give time. I, I don't have the financial resources of pick whoever you want who you think has more money because whatever they drive or live in or whatever, say, well, they've got more, so they, they can give more and all this stuff. God didn't talk anything about that. He says, give. There's this guy. Uh, his name is Albert Lexi. I don't know if you've heard of Albert Lexi. Uh, so I'm going to wrap this up here. But Albert Lexi uh, worked at Children's Hospital down in Pittsburgh. And I kind of have an affinity for the Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh because they saved my son's life. And Albert Lexi gave, in the course of his career, there $200,000 to the Children's Fund to make sure that kids would get the health care that they need no matter what. Their you know, economic capabilities and financial capabilities are doing. And you know, $200,000, I think that's a lot of money. He started there in 1982, so if you roll back, you know, and put 20 years of work in there, I mean, you know, $200,000 is a lot of money. Maybe it's not a lot of money to the, you know, chief neurosurgeon there who makes, you know, a million bucks, I don't know. But the thing about Albert is, you know what he did? He was a shoe shiner. He shined shoes. He made 10 grand a year. But he said, all my kids, I'm putting towards this fund. He bought it for his kids. $200,000 from a shoeshine guy. I've heard stories here about people who, you know, gave up a cup of coffee a day so that they could participate in funding this church and funding the things that we want to do in ministry. Are we willing to sacrifice? You know, Matthew 6, 21 says, for where your treasure is, where your heart will be also. And I think it's just a big challenge for us. And you know I'm kind of this pick ourselves in the butt kind of guy. Are we getting focused under God, under Jesus Christ? And what he did for us And is, you know, we're going to go into the Christmas season and we're going to receive the greatest gift, right? And we're going to learn that gift goes to the cross. For everybody here, everybody online, no matter what you've done, no matter how bad you think you are, we all experience and have the gift of salvation. What's it worth to you? So, I'll wrap this up here. Otherwise, we're going to need 10 minutes. As I reflect on today's scripture lesson, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. I challenge you to challenge me to be like that, and I challenge you to be like that. And if we do that, I really believe that this church will continue to do amazing things in this community. It'll impact the youth, it'll impact the children, it'll impact people of all ages and help people on their discipleship journey. Sound good? What do you think? Jordan's got the thumbs up there. All right, thank you for your time and attention this morning. And now we are going to go into our hymn of dedication. Unless Mark has anything else he wants to add. I do. Surprise. <laughs> Just a couple of other verses that came to mind as, as Sean was speaking. Uh, it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And then I describe the period from now to New Year's as an extreme marathon. 
because we're on the highways and byways back and forth with family and doing our shopping and doing our decorating and all those things. But particularly, this is a good week to take this verse to heart. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. And with that knowledge, what are we going to do? But give thanks. And now, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Let us stand and sing our hymn of dedication. Open my eyes that I may see you. Stand as you are so led, number 454. Thank mm -hmm. you. 